Hello, I'm April Levine Garrett. Welcome to Amplify Baltimore. In this current economic climate, Baltimore's workforce must be equipped with job-ready skills to gain successful employment. Today, we'll talk with people from the Mayor's Office of Employment Development, Baltimore's one-stop centers, Humanum, and Carver Vocational Technical High School, who are committed to doing just that. We are here with Karen Sitnik, the Director of the Mayor's Office of Employment Development. How are you, Karen? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me today. What is the mission of the Office of Employment Development? Our mission is to really build a strong workforce here in Baltimore City, and that means helping every city resident become job ready and connect to employment, and making sure that every business in the area has access to skilled and qualified workers so they can stay here, grow, and prosper. With Baltimore's population being about 630,000 people. Tell us what the unemployment statistics are. Well, right now, Baltimore is um, probably at a little over 11 percent unemployment, and that equates to approximately 31,000 people that are looking for work. With this current economic climate, how are you empowering the citizens of Baltimore for employment? Right now, what we're doing is trying to make sure that every Baltimore City resident is job ready so that they can enter the workforce with the tools they need to compete, whether it's now or when the economy rebounds. So what that means is we're helping people make sure they have a solid resume, sharp interviewing skills, um, computer literacy. Um, we're also making certain that folks know where the jobs are in this particular region and helping them through labor market information. Um, clearly, we want people to develop technical job-specific occupational skills, and we've been putting people through training um, so that they'll be first in the queue when those jobs open. Really as important aspect is making, pe making sure that people have the soft skills that uh -huh. every job requires. So we wanna make sure that people really are prepared to enter the job market knowing how to report to work on time, making sure they've got all of their uh, daycare issues lined up, uh, have good communication skills, and we're even providing financial literacy to help them manage their funds. Tell us more about the job seekers you're serving. Well, in this uh, economy right now, there is no typical job seeker. We, we've got people who are coming in our one-stop centers who are long-term unemployed. Um, some have just recently been laid off. Um, and we've got folks who are underemployed. Um, so we're working with people with very low skills. We're working with people who need to retool so that their skills can become more relevant to the 21st century workplace. Um, and we're also working with people to, as I said, upgrade their skills so that they can stay competitive in the job market. In this past fiscal year, from July 2010 to June 30th, 2011, we actually saw um, more than 15,000 new people enter the One Stop Career Centers and provided over 139,000 visits um, to folks. People took advantage of our digital learning labs. We had over 19,000 training sessions. We provided um, occupational skills training to over 700 people, and that ranged from uh, construction and healthcare to cybersecurity and weatherization. Um, and so people really have had an opportunity to come in, um, access the services at the One Stop Career Center. Um, and in fact, we were able to place, even in this economy, um, close to 2,700 people in jobs. We're also very, very concerned about making sure that our future workforce is prepared. So we do focus a lot of our work on our young people. Um, we work with um, in-school youth as well as young people who are out of school and disconnected um, because we know if we can get them prepared now and get them on a positive career and academic pathway, um, they will be our workers of tomorrow. Do you work with businesses to help create a capable workforce? Absolutely. Um, the business community is really the other side of the workforce equation. We've got job seekers and we've got businesses. And we really need to listen to what businesses tell us that they need so that we can use that information and make sure that the people coming in the one stops are prepared with just those, just those skills. Um, our business services team worked with over 500 people in this past fiscal year, um, bringing a broad menu of low to no cost services, ranging from outreach, recruitment, pre-screening assessment, um, referrals of qualified job candidates. We set up hiring halls, we'll do job fairs. We provide information on tax credits and labor market analysis to help them see where their jobs are going to be. 
Um, and, and we also bring funding to help them do customized training uh, for new entrants as well as um, upgrade skills training to keep their current workforce um, on the cutting edge. What are the challenges you face with providing the people of Baltimore with workforce opportunities? Well, oftentimes people will come into the One Stop Center and um, they really don't have the basic academic literacy skills to even benefit from training. So their reading and their computation skills um, are far below what they would need to be able to take a training course. So we will work very hard to help those individuals um, raise their reading and math skills. We refer them to our adult education partners, but we also have on-site pre-GED and GED courses. Um, it is critical in the 21st century labor market um, for people to get their education and their credentials. So we work very, very hard to, uh, to provide those opportunities. And it's really the, um, the primary reason we work so much to uh, prepare our future workforce. Um, because we know and, and work very closely with the school system that if we can help young people stay on course and, and go from college to post-secondary education, um, then they will be on the path to college and careers. How can the people of Baltimore and businesses support your mission? Well, right now we um, are really looking for businesses to come to us and see us as their private employment agency, um, even if it's one job. Even if it's just a part-time job, we will be very happy to work with them. We'll find qualified city residents uh, to fill their needs. Um, and quite frankly, if every business could just hire one person, um, we would make a big difference. We'd start to move the needle. Um, one job at a time is all it takes. We'll also be happy to work with businesses to do customized training, to help them set up a curriculum to train people, and we'll bring some funding to the table. Um, businesses can open up their doors to our young people. They can do um, job shadowing, provide internships. Uh, they can help us with summer jobs. In fact, this past summer, we had 5,000 young people working, and that was really terrific. We need more businesses to step up to the plate. Um, we have a foundation. It's called the Baltimore City Foundation, not to be confused with the Baltimore Community Foundation. It's a 501c3 that is really set up for city government and is designed to help city agencies um, receive donations and contributions to augment the work they're doing. So businesses and individuals can contact me directly um, at the Mayor's Office of Employment Development at 3961910, and I can share all the information and provide them the details about how they can help. Well, that was really powerful information that you provided us with, not only for job seekers, but also for businesses who can really help us improve our employment outcomes in Baltimore. So thank you so much for all the work of your office, and thank you so much for amplifying Baltimore. Thank you, April. It's my pleasure. Craig Lewis, the program manager of Baltimore's Eastside One Stop Career Center. Craig, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Tell us about the services offered at Baltimore's One Stop Career Center. Here at the One Stop, there are a variety of workforce development services, services like job search assistance, uh, job search strategies, career development, occupational skills training, and educational services, and a host of other resources and services to help job seekers compete in the labor market. What are some of the challenges faced by job seekers who come to the center? I think um, some of the biggest challenges is for uh, the one-stop staff to help job seekers manage their expectations mm -hmm. because finding a job is a job and sometimes job seekers come into the one-stop expecting to leave from the one-stop with a job. Have you seen a change in the challenges over the years? Actually it's been magnified mm -hmm. uh, because it's taken a little bit longer to find a job and so as we work with job seekers, we really stress the importance of them being diligent, being faithful, and understanding that it's going to take multiple visits to the One Stop to, to land that job. If I'm a job seeker coming to the One Stop Career Center, what should I expect? You should expect to encounter professional staff. You should expect to find out about the resources and services into One Stop, but most importantly, how do you connect with those resources? And secondly, or thirdly, you should expect to have an appointment to come back and sit down with staff um, for your next steps. How should a customer prepare for the most productive visit to your center? That's an excellent question. I would recommend a customer prepare uh, before coming to the One Stop by gathering all of their uh, work history, their skill sets, 
um, if they don't have a resume so that when they come to the one stop and they're working with staff, we can help them construct a resume. Also, I would recommend that a job seeker come prepared to take advantage of all the resources and services that are available in the one stop. And finally, recommend that a job seeker come with a positive attitude, mm -hmm. come with an expecting attitude, mm -hmm. and uh, so that we can partner together to help them connect to uh, the labor market. Tell us how job seekers can get in contact with you. Job seekers can get in contact with the One Stop Career Centers by going on our website at www.oedworks.com or they can call 410-396-3009 to find the closest one stop nearest them. That was great information. I'm so happy that you were able to share with us today. I'm sure the job seekers in Baltimore are going to be grateful for that information as well. So thank you so much for being with us. Absolutely. We are on the fifth floor of the American Brewery, home of Humana. I'm so happy to be here today with Jeffrey Smith, Director of Public Affairs and Resource Enhancement. Hello. Hi. Mary Manzoni, Vice President of Workforce Development. Melissa Fitzgerald, the Workforce Development Specialist here at Humanum. And Marsha Legg, Director of Career Development and Transition Services. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. What is the mission of Humanum? Humanum has existed since uh, 1970. And we're a human service organization. And we're committed to uncompromising service for all of our customers. Really, what I like to say that we do, we invest in individuals who have not necessarily been invested in before. And those investments come in the forms of our giving them access to hard skills training in specific occupations, say within the healthcare industry, but also allowing them uh, job placement assistance, giving them uh, training in what we like to refer to as the soft skills, really the life skills that are as important as knowing a specific trade knowing to dress for success and to show up and be ready, um, but also helping folks be acclimated for work and getting them thinking positively, thinking of why job success is an important thing, and understanding for themselves what areas they may need to improve. And we're there to help give them access to skills across the spectrum to be able to be successful in the workplace. How is your mission unique compared to other workforce development programs? Humanum serves a variety of different populations. We pretty much started in the early 70s to serve adults that had disabilities, developmental and intellectual disabilities, and have, it, have since expanded. So we pretty much serve the whole spectrum of disabilities from mental health issues to developmental disabilities to individuals who have a brain injury to individuals who are deaf with the whole focus, workforce development, getting people back to work, being taxpaying citizens. Um, Within the last 10, 15 years, we started to serve some of the more the other underserved populations, people living in poverty. In the early, um, in 1997, when welfare reform started, Humanum started serving the welfare to, welfare to work recipients in Baltimore County. So um, at, the, at the onset of welfare reform, we started serving that population. And then um, about eight years ago, when we were looking to seek a building to relocate our Baltimore um, operations, we found this community. And really, the, commu the, um, the community surrounding this building is living in, in poverty. So it kind of expanded to serve that population. Um, we also serve youth, though. So our services aren't only for adults. So we're serving youth in the school systems. And more recently, um, we started serving parents of youth in middle schools. So our population really expanded from starting from a disability organization to serving those that are underserved, living pretty much in Central Maryland. What has it been like to work with the surrounding community? Working with the surrounding community has been very fulfilling, rewarding, as well as a challenge. I say a challenge because sometimes the consumers or the community members, they very badly want the help and the support but sometimes they don't expect you to support them the way that Humanum does. And so I'm learning that oftentimes you have to show up more often than not um, just to show them that you're really, really in their corner. What strategies have you found most effective in working with your clients? Typically when we begin working with someone new, we do a very thorough assessment to really identify what their needs are, um, what they bring to the table already in terms of strengths and interests, and then we go from there. Um, the strategies that we employ, particularly with working with youth, 
is to engage them very rapidly in something that's truly meaningful to them. Um, there are a lot of things that you can do, but if they're not buying into it, the passion's not there, um, and it's not something that they truly want to be involved with, we're not going to get anywhere. So we are very strategic when we develop new programs to really take their needs and their interests into consideration and make sure that we're offering something that's truly going to work um, and have a lasting impression on them. And we're also learning, um, as Mary Manzoni says, that you have to wrap around the individual. So while we do address the job readiness um, classes and lessons, diversity and problem solving in a workplace, just to name a few, we also have to address the barriers within the individual. We're learning that sometimes the individual, where the individual is concerned, you have to address self-esteem and confidence and fears because so many of them have been discouraged from their barriers or from having the door closed so many times. And so that's one of our strategies, just to wrap around them and support them in those untangible barriers. What are the various workforce opportunities you offer your clients? We offer our clients as many different um, various opportunities as possible. It's really all about exposing them to as many career options as we possibly can, just so that they understand what is out there, what's available to them, and where they would be a good asset to the workforce. Um, we do have a program for at-risk youth where we really focus on assisting young people with understanding careers uh, related to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, the STEM careers. And that's so utterly important in today's workforce, particularly here in Baltimore City, where there are so many opportunities for them to utilize those skills, and they're really becoming necessary in order for someone to be successful in tomorrow's workforce. Thank you all for being on Amplify Baltimore today. Stay tuned for more. I'm here with beautiful Brianna Baker. She is a client at Humanum and a resident of Wilson Park. Yes. Wilson Park. Thank you so much for being with us today, Brianna. Thank you. I'm so excited that you were able to talk with us today about the impact of this program on your life. Can you tell us a little bit more about how you discovered the program? A couple of people from Humanum came to my high school and asked me and a couple of other peers was I interested in the program, the SOS program. The SOS program helps children with dis disabilities, high school children, high school kids, and like seniors, like as they did with me, seniors that's coming straight out of you know graduation and helping them get in the workforce, getting the feel of how hands-on things are. How did the program help you obtain and sustain successful employment? The SOS program helped me with life skills such as getting up on my own. They didn't call me, you know, like like other programs, like they'll usually call you, call you. No, they prepared me to, I need to do this, I need to be ready and prepared, and they helped me with dealing with diversity, like, you know, there's different communications on how other people see it, like in different languages and other, like, cultures, you have to learn how to work with different ethnicities. What advice would you give someone who is facing the same employment challenges that you faced? I would let them know that they should start early, like in middle school or starting in high school, they should really start working on their skills now, like the basics, like knowing how to dress professionally, knowing how to speak professionally, and carrying themselves well. Brianna, you're just wonderful, and I'm so glad that you got to share your positive experience with Humanum, and also your wonderful news that you're attending college today for the very first day. We are very proud of you, and wish you the best on your journey. Thank you. Now on the third floor of the historic American Brewery Building, home of Humanum, with Jeffrey Smith, the Director of Public Affairs and Resource Enhancement, Marsha Legg, Director of Career Development and Transition Services, and Kirk Sykes, the Principal at Carver Vocational Technical High School. Thank you guys again for being with us today. Kirk, why is secondary vocational education important? It's important because the readiness levels that employees demand are the number one priority. Uh, they expect uh, new workers to come into their business, places of business um, prepared with the skill set uh, that's transferable, uh, where they won't need a lot of uh, support from management, uh, that they can make an immediate contribution to whatever the employer's uh, business uh, is. 
people missing about the opportunities afforded by this type of education? I think most people are missing the fact that it is not simply a, uh, a training program, that it is a fully rigorous uh, academic uh, preparation um, coupled with uh, work readiness and uh, really uh, solid exposure to some of the job specific uh, skills. Uh, for example, you know, we have students who are in CAD, Computer Aided Drafting and Design. Um, there's no other place uh, where you can really, at 18, have that sort of preparation and um, be able to go and work with somebody who um, may be gone to college as a drafter and then ultimately um, you know, learn, learn the computer applications. So it's, it's really, really important that people understand the value add in, in this sort of um, preparation. How do you prepare your students to enter their trade after graduation, or is that the purpose of vocational education? It is not the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to um, send them to college for additional preparation in some instances, but we also have great relationships with unions. Uh, we have great relationships with uh, employers who in some instances have already provided an internship to our students. And so we, 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 we suggest to them that now you can work your way through college in many instances with the training that you have. Uh, you have a great advantage over your peers who are just coming out of high school with just a high school diploma. And so you'll be able to uh, pay for your college, pay for your loans if need be, uh, and make a contribution to your family. Or if you choose to go right into the world of work, it should increase your earning power. What are some of the hard and soft skills you employ to best prepare young people and adults for employment opportunities? Well, the soft skills are critically important um, and we, you know, we partner with groups like Humanum and others to make sure that our students are really prepared um, in terms of knowing how to uh, communicate in the workplace, uh, knowing how to write well, uh, knowing how to uh, dress for the workplace. All of those skills that are not specific to their training, uh, but and so we, we kind of partner up with organizations um, to, to make sure that they have that. But in terms of the hard skills, um, our programs are really, really solidly based in the um, uh, skill specifics for the 11 career pathways that we have. How can vocational training programs and education institutions work together to create a stronger workforce? Well, I think that there needs to be, you know, greater collaboration, obviously. Um, there's a great opportunity, I think, in uh, the return to urban manufacturing, for example. Um, uh, cities like Baltimore are starving for not just a workforce, but a workforce with an in improved skill level. And so I think, uh, you know, through meetings, through uh, networking, uh, through having them to actually visit our school, uh, to meet with students, uh, inviting students to their organizations or, or companies uh, will, will allow us to really have a greater understanding of what each other brings to the table. As Kirk mentioned, the value of partnerships is immeasurable. Uh, Humanum has partnered with Baltimore City Public Schools since 1997 to offer a program called Start on Success, or SOS for short. Carver is one of um, numerous high schools that where we recruit students, um, mostly students with learning disabilities or some level of emotional disturbance, and they might need a little bit of extra support to be successful in the workplace. So the partnership, he mentioned the hard skills training and all of the focus and preparation that the schools do such a phenomenal job with. And then by partnering with Humanum, we're able to take the youth and place them into some really professional environments. Um, we partner with Johns Hopkins Hospital, University of Maryland Medical Center, and Kernan Hospital, just to name a few, who have opened their doors so willingly to serve as mentors and internship sites for uh, Baltimore City's youth. So Humanum's role in that is almost serving as the glue to ensure that it truly is a really seamless transition for these youth to make their, their graduation from the school system into the world of work. That's a great point. So Jeff, I mean, with all that we've learned today, are there any concluding thoughts that you'd like to leave with our audience about your work? I think one thing that we've learned, it's often said that it takes a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. I think you can look at that uh, phrase and, and look at it in so many broad ways. The work we do at schools, it takes a community to build a school, uh, it takes individuals to build a community, and really at the bottom line, what we try and instill here at Humanum is that we're all caring adults wanting to reach out to those in the community, be they youth, 
be the uh, adults that are facing some really intractable barriers to workforce, and just let them know there are others that want to help them to succeed, that we want to bring every resource to bear that we know of or that we can gain access to to help folks and let folks know there is a bright future ahead of them. And hopefully they'll be able to continue and enjoy that bright future in the wonderful, strong neighborhoods we have in Baltimore City. Well, thank you so much for hosting us here in this wonderful building. I'm hoping that the people of Baltimore get curious to come down and see what I've seen today, not just for the, the statuesque nature of the building, but also for the programs and services that you offer. Lots of great information and wonderful energy from the people who are in this building and beyond. Thank you so much for having us today. Thank you. And thank you so much for tuning in to Amplify Baltimore. I hope this show expanded your concept of employment opportunities in Baltimore. And remember, we the people of Baltimore possess all we need to make our city thrive. With every thought, word, and action, we have the power to create the city we want. And with this power, I hope you will always choose to Amplify Baltimore. Oh.